Believe it's it interesting not. that you say that because uh, one of the things that gave me courage uh -huh. was the was the jazz bass players, the the big okay. name jazz bass players, because they stood out mm -hmm. uh, and they did do solos, and and to the extent that I th uh, I thought. I, at least at that time, um, people regarded the jazz bass as a solo instrument. Mm, okay. You know, it was, you know, not only did it keep the store, <laughs> as Eugene <laughs> Wright used to tell me, um, but it also, uh, you know, they would take solos and, so, and the solos uh, by early on in the in late 50s and 60s, so it was absolutely phenomenal playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, that was an inspiration. I figured, well, if the if in the jazz world the bass can be a solo instrument, why can't it be right, a class, right, classical? Right. And interestingly enough, when I played my first recital uh -huh. in, New York, in Town Hall in New York, that's where everybody right, right. did their debut. Um, there were hardly any classical bass players in the audience. They were mostly jazzers. I mean, uh, you know, Ray Brown, Percy Heath. Uh, mm. Ron Carter, every everybody was there, um, all the all the top jazzers, and I and I afterwards I thought, isn't this strange? I mean, I'm, I I thought it's absolutely wonderful, but but that was proof of what where my inspiration came from because yeah. obviously mm -hmm. they didn't think it was so strange for even well, if you think about setting. it, Gary, if you think about it, uh, when when we talk with Ron uh, and we spoke with him a few times, it always comes down to the Samantha. Everyone yeah. started with that. So, yeah, it would make sense that, it, you know, in your book, it, it, it becomes so apparent how all these other bass players were like, oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. And, but the jazz players were, yeah, let's do this. And they all started in the same place, whether it was Samandal and Nene or whomever. It was yeah. the same. But, you know, it's interesting. Uh, my wife is working on a, dis a, a documentary on Slim Galliard. And Slam Stewart, my God, he would bow and sing an octave above. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he made a whole career of that, you know? Yeah, uh, I love that man. I, I visited him one time. Did you ever know him? No, unfortunately, no. He was, he was really a very colorful character. And, uh, and so I went to, so we spent the day together at his place in, in upper sta upstate New York. And, um, he uh, and at one point I had to go to the bathroom and he said, oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I said, uh -huh. nobody ever said that. I said, well, yeah, I have to go. <laughs> this is just this is too exciting to speak with you. So I went to the bathroom. And the reason why he wanted me to go is because he installed in the bathroom a, a, a pub a, like a public toilet with the walls around <laughs> and 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 there were all all kinds of sharpies <laughs> available and you're supposed to write something on the wall <laughs> and did you have to put a nickel in <laughs> you had to put a nickel in so i sat there looking at uh, all these autographs from all the great greatest bass players of all time all this in the toilet so uh, oh, that, God, that, that, is, that inspired me i think you know when i graduated from the juilliard I got a Bachelor of Music, and I remembered uh, my visit with Slam. So I said, you know, I think the appropriate place for that degree would be over my toilet. Where else would you, where else would you put a BM? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great. That's great. Uh, well, he did a record uh, with um, Major Holly, another yeah. proponent. Another guy. Yeah. Uh, and I love it because the, um, the title of the album was Shut Your Mouth. I know, and isn't that great? It's fabulous. It's I love that, Stevie. Yeah, I've listened yeah. to that probably 50 times. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>